Hello, and welcome to a special update from the R Validation Hub regarding our work streams. This is prepared for PositConf 2024 in a closed session, but we decided to open up some of our general work stream updates to the public and share it with you all via YouTube. So my name is Aaron Clark. I am a senior principal data scientist for Arcus Biosciences and currently am a co-lead on one of the work streams, the risk assessment application. So uh, today I'm going to bring you through a number of updates. But before I do that, I wanted to share who is our validation hub, just in case you don't know. So we're currently a collaboration uh, that supports the adoption of R uh, within the regulatory setting. A couple quick facts about us is we started out of R Pharma in 2018. We're led by approximately 10 organizations. We often have frequent involvement from the FDA and approximately 60 organizations consume our content. We are definitely affiliated with the R Consortium. Um, if you're unfamiliar with them, they support a ton of pharma related activities, including us, our submissions working group, a conference dedicated just to the industry of medicine, R Medicine, R Hub, and the R Repositories working group. If you're interested in learning more about the R Consortium, definitely go to their website, r-consortium.org, and consider becoming a member. The R Validation Hub has a website called pharmar.org, and there you'll find a number of our products that we frequently um, deliver on throughout the year and some past deliverables, such as our white paper. Our white paper is kind of the cornerstone of uh, documents that we've delivered and it showcases how we approach the validation problem using a risk-based approach. Uh, the repositories uh, working group is one that is headed up by Colleen Zeppelos and is actually featured and highlighted in both the USAR conference uh, that just took place in addition to PositConf 2024. So we won't actually talk much about them today. However, the communications work stream uh, has existed for approximately the last year, and it's comprised of a, a group of Jackson, Anuja, and Antal who are busily connecting validation experts across the industry. The following three products are uh, risk-based tools, and so we call them risk-based tools because they center on assessing the risk of our packages for GXP environments. Specifically, risk metric is kind of the cornerstone of that. Uh, that development team is headed up by Eric Milliman. And essentially it just gathers information about our packages that can be used to assess the quality of the, the software that was written. The risk assessment application is just a shiny user interface. Um, it's also a Golem package uh, used to serve up those risk metric assessments in an easy to digest format for any organization. And it also helps your or users from your organization follow whatever policies uh, and procedures that you have instilled for your validation process. Risk score is simply just a data package that has um, risk metric scores uh, tabulated for every uh, package on CRAN. Okay, so our agenda for today is just to give a quick work stream update for each of these work streams, communications, risk assessment, risk metric, but the repositories work stream is not gonna be highlighted here today um, because they have gotten so much um, publicity recently at conferences and we can link to their YouTube videos in the description of this video. And then we'll close. Okay, let's get started. So the communications work stream has four major components. First, our community meetings, our website revamp, case studies refresh, and gathering uh, GXP package lists, which is a new initiative. So first and foremost, our past meetups uh, are, are held almost quarterly, and we have tackled a lot of fun topics such as unraveling the term validation or uh, tackling different hurdles when it comes to embracing open source packages for projects. I'm really interested in the next community meeting, which is coming up August 20, uh, presented by Brid Roberts from Novartis. She's gonna talk about analyzing the change and assess risk score. So risk score being, you know, is it low, medium, or high risk um, across package releases? So maybe you evaluated the same package last year and maybe it was a different version um, and it was high risk, but now you're assessing it again and now it's medium risk. Or maybe it was low risk and in your second assessment 
or fourth or fifth or 10th assessment, it's now low risk package. So uh, there's different things that uh, can come into play when something like that happens. And so I'm really interested to hear what Brid has to say on the topic. If you've never attended a community meeting or you wanna get involved in those somehow, uh, at the very, very least, at least so you know that they're happening, follow the R Consortium. Uh, they publicize our meetups uh, frequently on LinkedIn, X, uh, Mastodon, things like that. Otherwise, the best way to get in the know is to just to join our mailing list. And the way that you can do that is go to pharmar.org and go to the Contact Us page. So that's gonna be over here under Get Involved, Contact Us, and then there's a mailing list button right there. So go ahead, sign up, and then that way you'll get the calendar invites sent directly to your email and you won't miss any of our future meetings. Okay, so uh, the communications worksheet has spent a lot of time improving the pharma.org pharma website. So I grabbed a couple old screenshots of the website and it used to be so, so text heavy outdated, um, really hard to find the things that you were looking for. Uh, but now it is so crisp, clean, streamlined, uh, more images and graphics, um, really easy to find the things that you're looking for. It's a huge improvement and it, it undertook a huge overhaul that I want to personally thank the communications team for uh, performing in the last year. In addition to that website refresh, the case studies has gotten a dedicated tab, which is uh, something that we published back in 2022, where we had three different YouTube videos where we interviewed different organizations about how they are approaching the problem of validation within their organization. And so we were able to sort of separate those out into dedicated articles for each organization. So now you can go and see their graphics and see their text. It's a lot easier to digest that information as opposed to, you know, um, uh, going through a video looking for a particular element. And that way, this way you can uh, send a link to your coworker and say, hey, look at how Novartis is doing this or look at how Roche is doing this. Um, it's just a lot easier to share. Okay, so there is a new initiative that kind of just took off and that is one where we are attempting to gather GXP package lists. So what do we mean by this? Uh, literally we're wondering, hey, what packages exist in your GXP environments? We want to know the name, the version, the assessment date, and whatever risk decision that you've tagged to that package. Um, what I mean by risk decision is usually it's a low, medium, a high, or maybe you just have a, you know, qualified versus not qualified, uh, whatever uh, risk decisions you've tagged. So why are we interested in that? So the R Validation Hub uh, really wants to just analyze that data um, and we want to see if there's some trends. And we want to find, figure out like, is there a cohort or subset of R packages that everyone kind of seems to agree on are, are qualified um, for late stage analyses? And so what we want to do is sort of form some consensus and do that in aggregate. We want to share that information with our regulatory repo working group um, because they are also in the process of determining certain thresholds for quality benchmarks. And so when they know like what packages are generally accepted versus not qualified, um, then that data can help them do that much, much better. Um, so how do we want to do this? Well, eventually, not right now, unfortunately, we're going to publish a form on pharmar.org to allow organizations like yours to sign up. And it can be up to you how you want to sign up. So you can be 100% anonymous and just send us a file with this data and we will protect your, your um, identity in every way possible. Or if you're interested, uh, you can kind of control how you release this information by open sourcing it yourself. And we'll show you an example of that in just a minute. There are six pharma orgs who have kind of floated the idea past so far and they've already committed. And two of those have already delivered their package list to us. So uh, one that I wanna highlight, this is uh, insightsengineering.github.io. Um, which is a property owned by Roche, and they have pushed out their packages so that they are freely available for anyone to go and look at right now. So if you're interested in checking out their packages, go and do it at this site. Um, 
Currently, if you scroll to the bottom, there is a DT table that allows you to simply scroll through all the packages or there's a search option here. And you can look at for uh, that, that have been validated against different versions of the R software. So this is very, very helpful. And you can, of course, download this information as well. But the way that Roche did this, I think, is provides a good exemplar if uh, you're interested in following in those footsteps because you can release that information with a license and you can also provide any caveats or disclaimers that you wish to include with that data. Um, so highly recommend this route, but understand that not everyone can do this. So if you wanted to submit your data anonymously, we're definitely open to that. Okay, so transitioning now away from communications work stream, heading over to the risk assessment application. Uh, so we're just going to touch on a few topics, such as our latest features, where we're headed next, and a new deployment that we want to uh, share with you today. So our latest features, there's really been a lot of them, and we cover them in, a, in this new blog post that we just posted to our website on a risk assessment version 3.1.1. Uh, but some of the big ones that we really haven't had a chance to publicize in a while is this first one, decision automation by risk metric assessment value. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. And then second of all is a new function explorer that allows uh, users to identify source code, help docs, and tests in a very centralized, consistent way for any exported functions from a package. Uh, there's been others like uh, we have a non-shiny manager deployment option now um, so that you can just plug in and use the posit connect um, authentication screen we've really expanded our dependency support and we've even added an about pat uh, an about tab okay so all these new features uh, we're constantly we do a couple of releases a year and they're usually um, centered around our github issues so the feedback loop is so crucial if you are interested in seeing a change on the app, I highly recommend that you go ahead and read through our existing issues. And if you don't see anything in there that solves the problem you're thinking about, please submit an issue today and we will probably work on it in the near future. Okay, so that first feature that I mentioned, the first enhancement is decision automation rules by assessment. So if you go check out our 2022 case studies that we published, um, you can find this graphic that Novartis provided. And you can see here that they have like this decision tree to uh, approach validation. And this is a very common approach. Um, not a lot of people are relying on risk scores and things like that, but really they look at the risk metric metrics also called assessments and they make decisions based upon those so they can either categorize packages as high risk or low risk or somewhere in between so here you can see uh, novartis has a core membership of packages that are generally accepted such as base and recommended those are packaged and bundled with your r installation but you can see here that tidyverse is also included uh, you can see that I have trusted authors, and then they start to get into some of our risk metric assessments. So is the package popular, meaning does it have greater than 1,000 monthly downloads? Is it influential? Is it relied upon by at least five other reverse dependencies? And then if I skip forward a little bit, is the, the code coverage greater than 60%? How is the documentation looking? Does it have uh, vignettes and manuals and a website published? Has it existed for more than a year? So things like this are all decisions that we can use to categorize a package as high, medium, or low risk. And we can do that automatically without having to sort of have, have a manual look through the package. So we've implemented this into the application by allowing users to add decision rules into the database. So here you can see, I can select any metric from risk metric I want, I chose dependencies. And in this conditional, I am actually writing a custom formula based upon the value of the dependencies assessment. So in this case, the dependencies assessment, uh, that dot X that you saw, is just a character vector of all the dependencies for uh, this package. And so I'm just saying, hey, if there are greater than 30 dependencies for any package that I upload, I wanna automatically categorize that as high risk. So here you can see, I can choose whatever decision I want. I'm gonna choose high risk. And then there's an else option as well. And then I click submit. And now anytime I go to upload a package, 
it will run through those rules in whatever order they exist and automatically uh, assign a decision. So here you can see I have the dependencies uh, um, a rule that I just created. And then rule two is, hey, if there's uh, no vignettes, I also want to consider those packages high risk. And then third, if there is a bug closure rate less than 0.25, uh, 25%, then I want to also consider those a slightly higher risk package. And so here you can see I download or I uploaded uh, seven packages to the database. And you can see that four of them came back with no vignettes because rule two uh, is cited as the reason why it was categorized as high risk. So a very, very useful feature will certainly help organizations um, uh, implement these rules for their users without having to teach them uh, to go and look at you know, each one of these metrics. It'll automatically categorize things for them. Very handy feature. Okay, so our next feature here is the in our source explorer, it is the function explorer. Like I said, a handy piece of code that was generously donated to our working group by GSK contributors. And um, you can see that you can select any exported function that you want, and you can toggle through different file types for that function. So here you can see we're looking at the Admiral package and I'm going to change the exported function to compute age and years. You can see it starts off by looking at the source code. So if you wanna see how that um, file is compiled, and then you can see all the tests that exist for compute age and years. So, and if you don't know how to use that function, you can always learn by the help docs and see, hey, how do you use this argument? How do you use that? And so this, is, this just provides a very, very consistent and centralized way to analyze exported functions, um, especially if maybe you only need to use one or two functions from a particular package, this will allow you to do so um, very, very efficiently without having to go to GitHub and look at the docs or download the source code or download the uh, source file um, from CRAN and then analyze it. This will do it all for you very, very quickly. Okay, so Changing gears here a little bit, I wanted to talk about some of the ways that uh, are some of the milestones we're going to start to tackle. Um, we have a lot of milestones defined, but the, the big next one that we want to sort of um, get accomplished is going scoreless. So uh, this is going to be a 100% optional um, uh, thing in our configuration file. So when you go to launch the app for the first time, you can say, hey, do I want to show all these risk scores in here or not? And so the reason why we're trying to make this an optional feature is that a lot of orgs don't really make actionable decisions based off of the score. And sometimes seeing that score off in the right hand or the, the left hand side on the on the side panel or in the database tab or in the dependencies tab is it kind of just interferes with the whole package review and um, isn't consistent with a lot of organizations uh, approach to validation. So um, especially if they haven't tweaked the weights for their, um, for their scores. So we've also collected survey data that suggests scores are rarely used for decision making. So because of that, we want to try to eliminate the scores. So this will be a little bit of a task. And so we want to invite anyone who's interested in working on this uh, with us. Please, please, please join. Uh, open up a GitHub issue and uh, we can certainly get you uh, onboarded in order to help develop this uh, new feature. Okay, so last update from risk assessment is uh, we have a new deployment. So this deployment is uh, what I'm calling a collaborative deployment. Previously, we've always used Shiny Apps IO, which is great for demoing the tool. Um, but now we wanna actually try to collaborate with different organizations. And you can't do that with Shiny Apps IO because persistent storage is not a thing. So any changes that you make to the database during your session is not gonna be stored for the next session. Um, so because of that, Procagia is administering a server for us with the app hosted there. And um, we're super thankful for their generous donations of time and talent. Um, and we've uh, already allocated a certain number of roles for people who are interested in participating. So the first role is a viewer. This person can basically uh, log into the app and see things. <laughs> That's all they can do. No really uh, permissions or privileges beyond that. Uh, anyone is also welcome to be a reviewer. So these people can add new packages to the database and they can also supply comments. So if you, if you are uh, uh, particularly opinionated about a certain package, you can provide a wealth of comments. 
And then thirdly is we're looking for leads, people to volunteer to become leads from their organizations that can uh, not only add packages and comment, but they can also edit package summaries. Those are useful for uh, the downloadable reports and they can also make decisions. So in the decisions we've allocated are either undecided, low, medium, or high risk. So we're trying to gain a little consensus here with sort of this community experiment um, uh, deployment. So if you're interested in becoming a lead, if you are kind of in charge of or highly involved with your um, validation decisions for GXP environments at your org, we would love if you would uh, join us um, in this new endeavor, this new experiment. Okay, so transitioning to risk metric. Uh, risk metric had a bunch of priorities from last year, so we just wanted to give you an update uh, on those from the summer of 2023. And then we wanna talk about sort of some new plans that are in the works right now. Okay, so risk metric really hope to achieve the following. So first and foremost, there is an ease of use um, effort that was put forward uh, about creating some wrapper functions to make the, the package just easier to use and create prettier outputs. Uh, metric completeness, uh, you, for all of you who use risk metric, you know that depending on the package source that you use, either package source, package remote, um, not all the assessments are gonna be available to you. So trying to uh, populate as many assessments as possible was uh, one of the priorities from last year. And then there are some modular additions that were prioritized. So allowing users to add custom and optional assessments uh, based off of certain packages like Oyster. Um, and optional meaning like if you have this package installed, then you could get some new assessments added on to your risk metric output. And then last but not least, focusing on metrics and scoring. And this is really about making the custom weighting options more robust um, and also providing some guidances and materials on how to do this um, uh, with community feedback and also publish our own views about um, uh, best practices. Okay, so this is kind of how things went. This was the progress from last year. So. The first one, ease of use, is actually near completion. So they did a good job, uh, the dev team working on that. So uh, kudos to them for that. Uh, metric completeness, they definitely made some progress in this area. Didn't finish all their uh, endpoints that they're hoping to hit. Um, but the modular additions actually got uh, pushed to the backlog. So not a lot of, of progress was made there, um, which is okay, because uh, there's lots of um, tasks on the, on the docket for this development team. And then the last but not least is focusing on metrics and scoring. So definitely a focus on metrics that has always been consistent with the dev team. Um, but scoring uh, didn't really get around to that. And in fact, we might have some news to share on that. So this is the current landscape of our risk tools today. So with risk metric really at the center of it. Risk metric um, produces you know, some assessments like percent coverage um, and or like a uh, number of downloads um, or does the package have vignettes, uh, things like that. Very concrete and very easy to serve up for our users. Um, and then it, there's also this other component that risk metric focuses on. And then there's the whole scoring component, which is slightly ambiguous, uh, a little bit harder to govern. Um, so for example, like we said, easy to calculate percent coverage or number of downloads, but how do you come up with an appropriate score for those um, measures? Like how many downloads is enough downloads to be considered uh, a, 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 a positive score in some way. And so uh, it's really a lot of overhead for the developers of risk metric to consider these things. And, and they're, they're ingested by risk assessment and the, the repos package. And so um, we kind of thought maybe it makes sense to separate these things out. After all, risk metric is dedicated towards metrics or at least it should be and it hasn't it's the score component has always been a little bit of an afterthought and so we don't want people to take these scores as um, authoritative in some way especially if they haven't been you know uh, weighted uh, to reflect the values of your organization and so because of that we're saying hey 
Um, we're going to identify some new working group or maybe it's a new package or, or maybe we're going to operate through an existing working group to try to come up with more strategic ways to configure these scores or to govern these scoring mechanisms. However, you need to know that in the meantime, these uh, scores are not going to be deprecated from the package. All the scoring functions are going to stay intact. So if you do use those scores, they're not going away. Uh, they're not going to be ripped out of risk metric, uh, but we do think that a separate entity does need to exist within the R validation hub to sort of uh, inform uh, what an appropriate score may be for some of these assessments. Okay, so as I said, the repositories group is not going to be getting a lot of uh, screen time uh, during this presentation, and that's because it's so popular in, in other forums. So the USAR conference was a presentation recently given by Conleen Zibalos, and then uh, Doug Kalf Kalkoff uh, gave a presentation at PositConf 2024. Um, so for today, we're going to skip this one. Um, so in closing, just want to say a few things. You can look forward to a couple of these deliverables. One, risk metric focus on qualities, less focus on scores. Uh, also a scoreless risk assessment application, um, new collaborative deployment, and then also GXP package list analyses. Uh, key opportunities if you wanna try to get involved is both the risk metric and risk assessment um, work streams are looking for project managers. Um, something to help us with milestone planning, sprint organization, issue triage, stakeholder management, all of those things uh, take up a lot of overhead for those dev teams right now. So if we have someone who's particularly gifted in project management, we'd love to have you join our team. Um, also, there's if you want to become a developer, so if you're not a project manager, but you want to uh, start uh, you know, contributing code, where well, you're more than welcome to, to join these teams. And then there's also some infrastructure development opportunities uh, via GitHub workflows, uh, metric calculations, things like that. Okay, so thank you so much to our many, many contributors. We're very thankful for all the work that you've donated um, and for your passion and for your rigor. If you are interested in a version of these slides, you can check out our PositConf 2024 slides, which have all these workstream updates, plus some stuff from the repositories. Uh, Workstream as well. So thank you so much for your time. And if you'd like to connect, please reach out to us on our GitHub repos or simply by going to pharmar.org and clicking on contact us. Thank you.